As a cybersecurity expert, what is the biggest threat businesses face and what advice do you have for them? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting when we think about the cyber criminals and the type of attackers and they're inherently opportunistic and they absolutely love a crisis. Um, and what a crisis we've seen really over the last 12 to 18 months. So they're really taking advantage of this and we've seen a massive increase with regard to phishing attacks and so really preying on people's fears and emotions so they pretend to be your bank they might pretend to be offering a vaccine or just to offering support they might pretend to be a charity um, and those type of things and it's really trying to get you to fool you into a false sense of security almost to try to get you to either give up credentials or click on links those type of things and those links can then lead to malware uh, and those type of things into your systems but we've also seen a massive increase with regards to ransomware um, and that's specifically targeting healthcare, critical infrastructure. I think what's been interesting to us is there's almost no company is out of bounds. So with their small, large enterprises, these frontline services, and, and even to us, it was quite shocking that we thought, no, surely in the middle of a pandemic, you wouldn't attack a hospital, you wouldn't attack the emergency services, but they did, um, particularly when we're talking about ransomware, because then they feel like they're more likely to pay um, if they're being backed into a corner. Um, so I think as you sort of said, there's, there's a real psychology behind the way that the um, cyber criminals act and the way that they take advantage of the situation. And I think it's therefore it's important that we're mindful with regards to what's going on and how these changing tactics and techniques are going to continue to evolve. And we always talk about this kind of assumed compromise, which is mentality, which is really important. So you have to kind of think that no matter how good your cybersecurity is, how good your defences are, the attackers will find a way in. So whether they're going to your users, they're finding vulnerabilities in your infrastructure, your networks, unpatched servers, you know, anything that they can find a way in, they will take advantage of. And it's something that you then have to think about. And it, it really comes back to that kind of business continuity where I come from, which is that constantly asking that what if, you know, what if somebody could get access to our systems? What if somebody could... Um, disrupt our services? What if someone could get access to our data? What if that data is leaked? Um, what, what's the impact of that? And therefore, where do I put my priorities? Where do I put my focus? And that's kind of really where we're at at the moment is that kind of really getting companies to kind of think about that. What, worst, what's the worst case scenario? And are you prepared for that? So we're no longer just talking about um, cyber security in, in isolation or the, the cyber incident response. We have to kind of think again at that kind of had more holistic response where we're thinking about uh, if we have these type of incidents, what's the business doing? So if my network goes down or I need to kind of um, quarantine, let's even, you know, parts of the network to do recovery and those type of things. Can the business revert to manual processes? And how am I communicating with customers, partners, and all of those type of things? So it's very much around thinking much wider and that crisis response to these type of incidents is really important as well. Mm. And in terms of the defences that businesses may have against cybersecurity, what do you think is the best thing that businesses can do? Is it educating their employees? That's one factor. Um, I, I mean, I, one of the things that really winds me up is when you know people get referred to as the weakest link, um, you know, and it's their fault when they fall foul to some of these scams. Um, you know, they click in the links, they've let malware, all of these type of things. But as I sort of said, there's a real psychology behind it. And it used to be that it would have been quite easy maybe to spot some of these phishing emails because they'd have had bad grammar, spelling mistakes. And we might have think about you know, the Nigerian prince emails and all <laughs> those type of things that we probably think about. But actually, so the, the attackers are getting wise to this. And, and they're, so they're, they're looking, they're spoofing um the email to almost look identical to the legitimate email the legitimate uh, website that you might look to you know your, your what does your bank website look like for example um so for the average user person that's not familiar with cyber security they wouldn't know the difference and so we can't expect people to sit there and you know look for all of these different things 
So we kind of have to, and again, it kind of comes back to that, you have to assume compromise. So you have to assume for the best will in the world, people are still going to click links. Mm -hmm. So we can provide them with education and awareness, and that's really important, but it can't be just a 30 minutes of e-learning once a year and expect people to know everything that's going on. It has to be constantly evolving and something that's kind of built into their everyday processes, if you like. So in essence, um, the real difference there is that you then have to make sure the technology is working in the background. Um, so, you know, if, if we kind of assume that we're gonna we have these phishing attacks or all these type of things, then it's about our ability to detect and respond as quickly as possible. So with the technology, really, what we're looking at is any anomalies, any things that don't look quite right. Um, if anyone's been able to access services, start, start making changes to exfiltrate data. So that's really where the technology comes into play and how it has to work in the background. So, so the education is one part, um, but actually the, the technology and how that works in the background to enable people to be secure and compliant by design and by default is really where we're kind of getting to.